much for joining us today and doing this last minute Q&A. We're so grateful you were able to step in and we're so excited to talk to you about your Rake Writer series behind yes. us here. Beautiful covers. <laughs> and so I do want to point out that if you lay out all the covers, it makes a whole person, which is beautiful and must have taken so much attention to teach A him. lot, a lot, yeah. <laughs> how, did, how did you come up with that? So when I hired my cover artist, um, I knew I wanted all five covers at once. I had already written all five books. And she was kind of like, okay, um, do you want a different character on every book? And I said, no, I really want this to be about my main character. Um, I thought we'd have her in different positions, and it was actually my cover artist who said, well, what if they all fit together? It was her idea. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, well, I don't know. I mean, knees and feet, like, <laughs> get a little weird. I was like, well, like, I guess we can try that. And it was stressful because, I, and we did one at a time, and I didn't know how it was all going to turn out, like the, how the whole thing was going to turn out, which was really stressful. Um, I'm happy with them. I'm happy with, like, you know, the knees on its own may be a little weird, but the beautiful thing about publishing all five at once is it is a whole package, so you see them all together. So you wrote all five books at once mm -hmm. and then published them all five books at once. Mm -hmm. And talking before the recording, we discussed how you like to do, you don't procrastinate, you love to see something all the way through. But you also mentioned this part of the decision was for the reader. So why, what about, what about that? Tell us about that. I just think once a reader steps into a new world, they want to stay there and finish what they started. I mean, I know I, as a reader, I, I only like to start completed theories because once you're in it, in it and you don't want to wait, and I lose track of what I've read and I forget the titles, and I forget the author's name, I'm terrible at that. And I just wanted readers to be able to have the complete story because it is one complete story. It's, you know, I don't feel like the first book is its own thing. I just feel like it's just one thing. I am the same way. I'm also a binge reader. And I also will only read a completed series because the impatience is killer for me. I can't wait for the next one. And I do buy a whole series at once before I even read the first one. I just invest Commit. fully. I'm mm -hmm. committed. I'm going to see this all the way through. So I appreciate that as a reader. Yeah. As well as a publishing professional because it was really fun to promote all at once. <laughs> But let's introduce your world. Okay. Let's talk about the series. So you mm -hmm. said you think of it as one whole book. So why yes. don't you give us, without spoilers, why don't you give us a description, an intro to your world, to the series? Okay, as one whole thing. As one whole thing. Um, <laughs> it's high fantasy, so it's not, how dare you? Um, <laughs> it's high fantasy, so it does not take place in our world. There are these dragon creatures with feathers called Raken. Um, it's, there's, there's a couple of different romance plots. Um, Mira, the main character, she's an ordinary human living her ordinary life, and she has this huge transformation over the course of the whole series. And yeah, and there's found family, there's elemental magic, there's fights, there's really cringy moments that make people laugh, I hope. Um, yeah, and moments that you find cringy that we as readers love. We read an excerpt this morning during our Dragon Brunch that Melanie was a huge fan of, but I was eating it up. It plugged my so. ears. I thought it was incredible. I love a good spicy scene. Yeah. And so do so many romantic readers. So what are some romance tropes that we can expect to see in the series? Ooh. I need to brush up on my tropes, I guess. <laughs> There's, ooh, let me think you, of some you think of that. Um, yeah. Only one bed, only one horse, maybe only one dragon. There's a little bit of, I guess, <laughs> only one dragon. Only one dragon. Um, there's a bit of a love triangle. Um, there's enemies to lovers, friends to lovers, strangers to lovers. Kind of enemies to lovers. Kind of. I mean, that's a loose category. And it's a slow um, burn. Definitely a bit of a slow burn in the romance part. It doesn't quite start in book one, um, but then there's lots of tension in book two and then throughout the rest of the series. And, and each book adds a point of view character, too, so there are lots of other romance subplots and stuff. 
And Play View, that's fun because you played around a lot with that and added more throughout the series. And sometimes you'll see like the same points of views throughout a series, but you just like added a bunch in. And what I specifically love about that is it really immersed me into the world more because everyone had a different experience and perspective. What made you decide to do that? It just felt necessary. Like I, I want readers to know what my characters are thinking. And you only know what a character is thinking if they're a point of view character. So when a character was big enough, important enough to for me to want readers to understand their motivation and understand their growth, because that's the thing, my books are a lot about character development. It's a lot about personal growth and personal struggles and and you know, finding yourself. And you only get that if it's a point of view character. Fair enough. Tell us about your Rakes. They're different than dragons, but similar for our dragon lovers. Yes. What are the similarities and differences? Um, so, Raken. Sorry, Raken. <laughs> Raken. Uh, they have feathers. Okay. But, you know, they're very similar in, like, what you think of as size for a dragon. They have wings. Um, they have a scaly face. They do breathe fire, but it comes out in this sphere of like little fire swirls because their fire, it's rake fire. It's different than regular fire. It doesn't need wood or coal or anything for it to burn. It just, it uses the rake's energy. Mm -hmm. Like it uses their magic energy to burn. So, um, you know, if you were encased in rake fire, thank God I'm not. You would disappear and the chair would disappear, but then the fire could keep going. Like, it okay. doesn't need to eat anything um, to exist. Yeah. I like that twist to it. And they communicate with their riders mentally. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. And the like reason, me. I think I was telling someone else, but the reason the rake fire is spherical is because that's how they, in my head anyway, that's how they incubate their eggs. That's why. That's why it's like round, because that's what it's for. It's not just like, because I had to ask myself, okay, this creature exists in the world, and every time a creature exists in the world, they need to um, eat, they need to reproduce, like, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, so why is the fire there, you know? Like, why, like, why is this, you know, is it how they eat? Is it how they, you know, I decided that's how they incubate their eggs. Okay. <laughs> it's not in the books. I, maybe it's a small mention, but yeah. So... Thorough. <laughs> it's interesting because it feels like you're so thorough in your research, but it's all from your own brain. So you just oh, like yeah. really thought through everything. Yeah. Would you consider yourself a bit of an overthinker? Or just I a thorough thinker? I consider myself a bit of a perfectionist. Okay. Um, yeah. But those sorts of things, it's just imagination. I have an overabundance of imagination and it just comes out. It's remembering what I've already written that's the hard part. I had to keep an obsessive amount of lists because mm -hmm. I will name the character, I will describe the character, and then I will immediately forget what that character's name is or what they look like. Mm -hmm. I remember their feelings. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm very like focused on character like characterization. I'll remember everyone's behavior and their feelings and how they would act. I'm just like, what is their name? <laughs> you have to keep everyone's names, everyone's ages. And you know all of the, but the world building details. I don't have a problem with those. Those don't leave my head. You know huh. they just exist in this space in my brain. Like I, I didn't. Now that I think about it, I did not keep a list of any of that. Coming back to inspiration, because I want to pick a side on how you chose the names for your characters. Um. So, my main character Mira. That was not her original name, but then. I wanted to keep her original name on my baby name was, so I decided to rename her. And um, so her full name is Mira Haleship, and we kind of vaguely know in book one that her ancestors came from across the sea somewhere, and we don't know where. And um, Mira in German is ocean, and so I just, and then Haleship, and I just kind of liked the feel of that. Most of the time I just like pull them out of, I guess, my head or my butt, you could say, but... I just, I just make them up, and when I do feel stuck, what I like to do is look up Latin words, and then use the Latin as root. So, like one of the side characters um, in Warrior at Heart is named Solil, and that comes from sun. She's very sunny blonde. Um, okay. Yeah. 
That's cool. I love getting into an etymology, a little bit of linguistics with your fantasy. Yeah. And then for your inspiration. Mm -hmm. So you wrote these all at once, all in one go. Mm -hmm. You mentioned your list and all of that, but what made you want to write them? What made you want to take it out of your head and put it into the world? Yeah, so um, I had just listened to the Aragon audiobooks with my husband. We were brand new parents, it's been the pandemic, um, and I was just home all the time with my baby by myself, and I was escaping into my daydreams a lot. And this is normal for me. And, you know, sometimes I'll have a daydream that lasts me a day. And then other times I'll have a daydream that lasts me six months. And it just keeps going and going and going. And after a few months, I thought to myself, you know, like, this is getting pretty in depth. Like, this is getting pretty thorough. Like, this has a good basis, I guess, in my brain. And for the first time in my whole life, I thought, well, what if I wrote it down? And it had never, I don't know, like, I had always thought that to be an author, you had to have a huge ego. I never had a huge ego. I was never very confident. And I think I would have worried, like, well, what will people think of me? What will people think of what I wrote? Mm-hmm. And it's scary, you know? And, and it's, But what's scarier is being a mom. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're a mom, like, you have to take care of your baby and nothing else matters. Mm-hmm. So I didn't feel a lot of doubt. Like, I didn't even have space in my brain to experience doubt because all of the space in my brain was taken up by like keeping this child from screaming <laughs> and I just you know I I didn't doubt myself because of my daughter and I also felt the motivation to make her proud of me so you know she's the reason I wrote um, which has made these two years hard because I became a mom and an author at the same time but you know <laughs> I'm interested to like come back and do like a a 20 year reunion follow up and see if your daughter has read them and what she thinks of them. (laughs) Who knows? Inspiration. Who knows? And you know, by the time she's old enough to read them, like who knows even how relevant they'll be or if I'll have to like do a rewrite. I don't know. You'll have like 20 other books that she's going to catch up on a whole backlist. But at the very least, even if she doesn't, you know, at the very least I'm showing her that she can be passionate about something and have a career. Um, I love that. And her favorite word is rar. Rar, yes. Rar. Everything is rar. She <laughs> sees the cover, she says rar. So, you know, they're raking, but they're rars in our house. Yeah. <laughs> and then who do you think is going to really enjoy your book? Like, if you had to think of who you're, not necessarily your ideal reader, but the mm-hmm. book's ideal audience who would you how would you describe them i think people who love ya fantasy for the kind of like relatable and accessible world building but then who also want more adult themes and like more spice too um because i think you know, as far as fantasy goes, it's epic fantasy, but I try really hard not to make my readers think too hard about the world building. Because that's something I want to do. I don't want to learn a lot of words. I don't want to learn a language. Like, I don't want to speak Dorvish. Um, <laughs> so, and so I think it's kind of similar to why fantasy in that respect, and that it's extremely mm-hmm. accessible, and you don't have to think too hard. Um, but then, you know, my characters are older than that, and have a lot of more intense themes. What are some of the themes and takeaways, um, without spoilers, if you can? I mean, the biggest takeaway of the whole series is to choose love and acceptance and peace over hate and violence, basically. I mean, that's the biggest takeaway. It's a very noble theme. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's epic fantasy. You know, these battles. <laughs> you have to find that nobility. You know, Mira's totally on our hero journey. You know, struggling with aspects of morality, like coming into her own as a woman and then um, having all of this crazy power towards the end and having to decide what to do with that. I do love, I was going to ask about comp titles and comp authors, except Mm -hmm. that you have five books and they're all kind of different as far as comparative titles. It's hard. That's why genre-wise it's also hard, especially book one. Um, because, you know, the, the series as a whole is definitely fantasy romance, but then the romance doesn't start in book one, and I'm always like, I'm sorry! Like, <laughs> um, 
But yeah, it's, it's hard to find comps for that reason. But we have like a training montage, and oh, we yeah. have like the start of the hero's journey, and then we have like the spice over the spice, here. Found family. Found family. Um, it's got everything. So it's, it's got, got everything. everything. everything for it's all spread out. There's you know, I've had reviews, people saying they cried and laughed. Mm. Different, you know, it has everything. It's just kind of spread out in there. And we can buy your books everywhere books are sold. Everywhere. As of right now. Barnes and Noble, bookshop.org. They're all available. My Nook link is currently down from having trouble with Barnes and Noble, but that should be back. And um, the first ebook is free. Perfect. Do we have any questions from the audience? We were talking beforehand, so they might not be. <laughs> but um, if you do end up buying, reading the series, which we highly recommend, do remember to leave reviews everywhere you review books, uh, Goodreads, Amazon, especially for algorithmic promotion, but also Storygraph, social media, tag Melanie, who has beautiful photos on Instagram <laughs> from these photo shoots that you did. Uh, with the series and with your kids. So check that out and the watchers and our guests can follow you at Melanie K. Michella. Melanie K. Michella. Yep. On website and social media. Yep. Perfect. Thank you all for joining. Thank you.